Xilinx last year came up with this concept called the Versal architecture, right? And this Versal architecture is sort of their next evolution of their hardware, okay? And if you look closely, this is from Xilinx, right? Xilinx is an FPGA company. There is almost nothing FPGA about this, right? What it has is ARM processor, right? Multiple ARM processors. It has AI engines, which, you know, they are essentially meant for doing some kind of AI compute, but ultimately what they have is a lot of Mac units capable of doing the, you know, uh, the Mac operations required for these kind of systems. And they also have something that they call adaptable engines, which are the closest that you can get to the idea of the FPGA, right? But are not really speaking, just the pure FPGAs as we normally understand it from Xilinx. The important point is this one here, the network on chip, right? So what they have is they have this big network on chip sitting out here, which basically takes care of all the communication between all of these different blocks, right? And they have a lot of detail on, you know, how this could be used in practice, right? This is the kind of structure that you have. Essentially, you know, uh, this is the thing, right? Each of these is a processing engine. Right? And these would be the switches, right? If you look at it, what is it capable? Uh, this is a sort of a mesh network that we are talking about, right? Every unit is capable of communicating with the next immediate thing. But on the other hand, you also have the longer links, okay? So in principle, this could also be set up as a complete crossbar kind of a structure. Unfortunately, there's not too much more detail in this presentation, at least it's mostly just largely a marketing presentation. It does not have too much technical detail, uh, but you know, they do sort of give the kind of connections that can be put together and so on. And ultimately what we are talking about is right, huge amounts of bandwidth, right? Terabytes per second of interface bandwidth. How do you get something like that? Ultimately, what we are talking about is the bisection bandwidth of the system, right? Can I really, when I say terabytes per second, it's not that any given link has a terabyte per second bandwidth. What I do have is I have so many cores, each of which is capable of handling, let's say, you know, even if I'm doing like one gigabit per one gigahertz frequency and a 32 bit bus, then one link is basically 32 gigabits per second, right? And if I have, you know, in this case, I believe they have something like 128 processors. So you could have 64 on one side, 64 on another side. And suddenly what you have is 32 gigabits per second into 64 gives me two terabits per second of switching bandwidth across those, right? The bisection bandwidth essentially goes into the terabit scale, right? So that is the sense in which they are talking about the interface bandwidth for systems like this, right? Similarly, Intel actually has a lot more detailed uh, description where they talk about, you know, how you can you know, apply the benefits of network on chip architecture to FPGA system design, right? It's just a white paper available from the Intel uh, website. When I say Intel, this is actually Altera, right? Uh, which was bought by Intel at some point, right? It has a lot of useful information, such as, for example, it shows you what are the constituents of this network on chip, right? You have processors, DMA controller, the PCI Express also can act as a data master, right? So this is one place where, for example, I can see that the PCI Express is acting as a master. Uh, rest of it is basically slaves, right? I have on-chip memory, UART memory controller, all of those are just acting as slave interfaces, right? Now, what do I do with this? Essentially, there's a lot of detail over here, right? About how you can use multiple topologies, options, and so on. But, and the interesting thing that we have over here is there's software interface, right? They essentially, those of you who have worked with Altera in the past, you might have actually come across this software, right? Now they call it platform designer. It used to be called Altera QSIS. What you can do is use their NEOS processor, put together the various different, you know, the SRAM controllers, the uh, flash controllers and so on, and just connect them up over here graphically. And ultimately what it will do is it will put together the entire thing in terms of, you know, it creates the rest of it, right? Uh, it uses this kind of an NOC interconnect where they sort of say that, you know, you can create a multi-hop network, 
in order to communicate across all of these different parts. Now, one interesting piece of information which comes out over here is actually to do with why is all this even useful? The performance examples that we have over here, right? So they are talking about this 16 master, 16 slave system. And this is where the real sort of benefit of something like this comes about or becomes clear. The traditional interconnect that tries to directly, you know, communicate between 16 masters and 16 slaves, they implemented it. They have given the resource usage, the number of logic modules, ALM, I think is some kind of logic module or whatever, the equivalent of the Xilinx uh, configurable logic block, right? Uh, which basically takes something like 12,000 or so. It's just a number. I don't really understand that number, but you know, it's there. The relative numbers are what matters. The important thing is 130 megahertz, the maximum speed at which it can work, right? From there, they start looking at different kinds of designs, right? What happens if I go with a fully combinational network on chip? A fully combinational network on chip is interesting because essentially what it's saying is it will still get you from A to B in a single clock cycle. Right? But what they're saying is because of the way it has been structured, right, rather than trying to directly connect all points to all of the points, you are still able to get a significant improvement in the maximum frequency at which it can work. But the problem is increase in the hardware usage. But the sweet spot really comes after that, right? Let's say you allow something like a one cycle network latency. Your frequency has gone up to 225 and you actually have a reduction in the total hardware usage. Okay. And in fact, you can keep going, right? So this goes all the way up to 300 plus megahertz finally, right? Where of course, you know, this is huge. You have a huge hardware overhead to deal with at that point. But question is, is it worth it? Why is there such a huge hardware overhead? Because heavy pipelining, lots of registers, right? And uh, even though you have a four cycle network latency, effectively what ends up happening is you're using up a lot of hardware resources for storing data. Okay. So this, these are two examples of NOCs that are sort of commercially available and can be used depending on the type of hardware that you have. 